Yeah, so this time uh, it's just going to be me presenting. Uh, however, uh, I hope it's not only going to be me to, um, to um, you know, run the discussion later on. It's about mastering third party add on supply chain risks um, when it comes to tackling SAP security together. And uh, I would like to give you um, some of my learnings in the past couple of years where you know, I'm, I've been focusing on software supply chain security and, um, you know, SSDLC, Secure Software Development Life Cycles, uh, pretty much from the beginning of my SAP um, application security career. And uh, yeah, I want to share some of my learning, some of the, um, you know, ugly things I've seen, um, but also some of the ideas how um, things can be addressed. And um, yeah, um, We'll be talking about, first of all, what is the understanding when it comes to the SAP ecosystem on um, yeah, third party software? Um, what is the meaning um, of uh, SAP certified add ons in that third party software ecosystem? Uh, yeah, and then I will tell you some war stories, some things that I have seen when you know, either we have done uh, forensics. Um, subsequently to a security incident or breach at some of our customers, or when we have asked by our customers to conduct an assessment on a third party software that uh, is like integrated um, in uh, an SAP environment, uh, following up by some recommendations and as always having an open discussion. All right. Um, yeah, so just related to that, um, when it comes to the evaluation of third party software, um, it very often uh, comes about like the analysis of, of code security. Uh, if you want to learn more about code security to be able to do a, 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 like a more due diligent uh, job when it comes to verifying the security of, of third party add-ons, uh, I'm happy to have you in, in one of my live classes, which is the like fundamentals of securing our based business applications specifically relevant when it comes to the security of ABAP third-party add-ons. Um, also, you know, we have some uh, a service uh, pillar uh, on the whole topic of software supply chain security around SAP, uh, which starts from, you know, helping you to review your, uh, your secure software development lifecycle and change process. Uh, when it comes to um, helping you analyzing stuff, uh, supply chain risks uh, for your software supply chain in your SAP environment, conducting code analysis, uh, but also um, you know helping you with uh, with incorporating software supply chain uh, risks and and threats in a threat model. So yeah, what are we talking about when uh, when we're talking about uh, third party software and the meaning of third party software in the SAP ecosystem? So like there are, there are typically three different pillars uh, where we have third party software either being an, a solution extension of the SAP standard. So where third party software as an add-on is installed in the same runtime environment, like being it, for example, as a transport um, into an S4HANA system um, or as a, as a SANE package, um, that's being installed um, as, a, as a, its own solution component in an S4HANA system, which is not provided by SAP, but uh, one of the many vendors out there who provide um, um, products and um, yeah, um, also bundled with services uh, for SAP solutions or to integrate with SAP solutions which is the next part, like integration interfaces. So where software vendors have like their separate software product, uh, but it makes very much sense to have like a communication integration or like whatever kind of integration to, for example, retrieve or update certain business data uh, within an SAP system. Um, and also having this um, integrated with different kind of cloud services. Um, yeah, there are, there are uh, plenty of examples for that, being it, for example, for uh, integrating a document management system um, or an archiving system 
um, within your uh, your SAP ERP environment. Um, also, however, being it functional extensions, um, being it for legal purposes, uh, for example, you have to provide a certain uh, tax report statement, uh, depending on where you are in the world, and that is not out of the box available um, with the SAP standard. And then, like, for example, local software vendors related to that um, governmental entity will uh, typically have a solution for that. And yeah, yeah, which sometimes even you you have to if you want to make business uh, in in a certain country and so on, you have to uh, implement that uh, that certain third party solution um, in your SAP environment. Um, yeah, um, which means what 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 we are not addressing so much is like all of the things which are of course um, as important. Um, like securing your own software development uh, lifecycle of your own custom implemented extensions or the extensions as like specialized individual program solutions um, in, uh, in your SAP environment. We are more focusing on like products and, and out of the box available solutions provided from software vendors um, that are actually doing professional product development. Yeah, and uh, maybe or maybe not, you have already uh, come across uh, the fact that uh, SAP is actually running um, um, uh, kind of as a certification authority uh, for third-party add-ons. Um, that's the so-called uh, SAP ICC uh, department um, or um, business practice at SAP. And um, yeah, it, it was uh, like at the end of 2020, where a customer of us due to um, uh, recent announcements in the certification practice of this SAP department asked us to verify or having a closer look um, if they can actually reduce their efforts um, they have uh, Im implemented on their end um, to check the security of the third party add-ons they have been installing using and updating in their environment. And um, yeah, as a result of that, um, I have a, a pretty uh, current um, um, yeah, status about what's the meaning of, uh, of this certification that SAP provides for third party add-ons providers from a security point of view. And um, yeah, just to give you some numbers. So as of today, there are more than 1,300 uh, software solutions. Uh, that are being listed in the so-called SAP Certified Solutions Directory. And um, from this is actually provided um, from uh, 828 third-party software vendors uh, certified by SAP. And um, for integration um, and into, ex uh, into extension of several SAP products and cloud solutions. Um, the solutions can have different tags. For example, they can be declared as so-called endorsed apps, co-innovated apps, or premium apps. Um, if I, if you mind, just putting the first link in, in here, which is about the, um, um, which is actually linked to the uh, certified solution directory from SAP. All right. Um, yeah, so my analysis that I have that, uh, at that time conducted uh, for the SAP ICC and um, what does it actually mean from a, uh, from a security perspective? So what kind of security checks are being incorporated in here? Um, I have actually uh, written a blog article about that, uh, which if, uh, if you also can put a link into the chat, uh, where you can see like the details of this analysis down the line, um, kind of summarizing it real quick. Um, in general, um, like the general certification means first of all, that the capability of um, installation, um, uninstallation and integration of the solution is being tested. So which means there is no further security testing incorporated. 
um, in the uh, in the general uh, certification. Um, the deployment cannot be verified. So if you receive um, the, the deployment of the software vendor of the third party add-on uh, against the certification, because the certificate does not contain any, for example, digital signature or hash or whatsoever. Um, the only thing where you can be sure that you are receiving the actual certified add-on uh, delivery is when it's downloaded from the SAP marketplace which is only possible for a fraction of these uh, solutions because it's only possible for, possible for those of them who are listed uh, on the SAP price list, uh, which is like really, really um, um, like a handful of, of these kind of things. Um, only the so-called premium or endorsed app must run through a security code analysis. Um, other, you know, uh, vendors can pay, um, uh, can pay an uplift um, to actually get into uh, into a security code analysis, um, but they yeah um, they have to uh, they have to pay extra for that. But most of them actually don't. And like the interesting part is specifically when we are talking about add-ons for the S four Hana or NetWeaver uh, integration section that the code analysis. Uh, is supposed to be conducted by the vendor in the vendor development environment. And um, yeah, which means the vendor can share any results they want with the SAP ICC um, and like I can exclude the results that they don't want. And uh, SAP won't share the results with you uh, as a customer or prospect. Maybe the vendor does, but you don't actually know that. So, which means to summarize it, uh, me searching for the security value of the SAP uh, ICC certification, um, yeah, um, it's, it's quite tiny. So, just some stories from the wild. Um, some of the things that I came along with when auditing third party software and vendors. Um, is like starting with very typical things such as access flaws, so that the installation documentation um, is demanding to like assigning, for example, um, an interface user, like most po uh, all possible privileges, such as with assigning sub or sub new permissions for that service user. Um, and for example, basic things such, such as that read and change permissions are not segregated within the programming implementation. Um, yeah, and then of course, all kind of code security flaws. So code security flaws exists in custom developments as well as they exist in, uh, in um, the SAP standard. And of course, they also exist in third party solutions. Um, the problem of course with third party solutions can be that um, like despite SAP, where you do have a uh, um, um, uh, support uh, ticket system with them, where you, if you find a security flaw, um, you can have this reported to the product security response team at SAP. Uh, this kind of processes or ways to interact do not necessarily always exist with all kind of third party vendors. Um, so like just to have uh, a more popular example mentioned, um, uh, P PwC were actually um, using uh, an, an ABAP extension um, called ACE um, to conduct uh, their um, compliance and security audits in SAP environments. And this tooling had uh, severe security flaws um, exposed by you know, different code security issues. And um, yeah, like PwC, as you could probably imagine um, that you might would expect that they would handle this in a, in a diligent manner. There were some kind of issues actually um, to making them resolve these, uh, these kind of um, uh, security flaws in the solution. Um, just as a remark, PwC um, were uh, shipping this uh, this ABAP code um, as a Z program, so in the customer namespace, and um, um, like they weren't fully aware 
which customers actually have the flawed solutions uh, or you know have um, um, imported these flawed solution in their environment. Uh, so depending on uh, where you are working, it might be um, worthwhile to check if there is a report existing in your system that is uh, starting with uh, Z uh, ACE. Um, so that might be this vulnerable PWC report. Like newer versions of that report are in the meanwhile actually shipped in a separate namespace. So you can clearly distinguish the vulnerable and the non-vulnerable version actually. Um, yeah, and you know, um, the, the security flaws can be anything as within uh, customer developments or the SAP standard from code injection to uh, operating system command injection, to, uh, flawed crypto, hard-coded credentials, uh, so that actually code is online being, uh, being loaded and executed, uh, so from a remote source into that system. Um, yeah, so all of these things uh, I've come, come, uh, come across with. Uh, in addition to that, um, some vendors uh, think that it might be a good idea to, um, you know, speed up the deployment process or ease up the deployment by putting um, uh, objects um, on uh, their software delivery, which are actually not supposed to be there. Such as, for example, as you can do, for example, in an ABAP transport, you can have a user accounts on the transport. You can actually assign roles and profiles to user accounts. Uh, you can create uh, throughout the transport uh, RC destinations, so outbound communication destinations. You can activate business switches. Uh, I have even seen like that unsigned operating system binaries have been shipped throughout the transport and then like installed on the operating system. Um, so bypassing the actual uh, software management practices for the operating system of the application server of the SAP system, uh, including things like uh, modifications to SAP objects. So to SAP standard programs and so on. Um, so yeah, uh, be aware of these kind of things. There are actually plenty of options, so I, 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 or like plenty of possibilities uh, that that you might be able to think of. Um, in general, when it comes to uh, to software deployments in an on-premise SAP environment, uh, an ABAP system, um, there are you know uh, plenty of interesting security use cases uh, you can think of. The ones I have mentioned over here are the ones that I have come across with in uh, in the real world. And uh, yeah, another point is insecure shipping. So, um, like within this example, this is not how you would expect actually a delivery to arrive at your home. Uh, neither do you want to have this in um, uh, as like a shop as a software shipping for your SAP environment. So I have actually seen that uh, like uh, vendor sending um, transports by an unencrypted or unsigned email um, or like letting uh, customers downloading uh, transport files from a private Dropbox account. Um, so that in addition to that, there is no digital, uh, digital signature or hash throughout um, uh, a trustworthy channel provided so that you can actually verify is actually what you're getting here really what you're supposed to get. Um, that software is being shipped in the customer namespace, or for example, that software is being, uh, is being provided as a text file that the customer is asked to upload into the other workbench. But like all of these things are not professional software delivery, which are lacking any practices or like, you know, uh, I wouldn't even say best practices, but like minimal practices uh, when it comes to address um, uh, software uh, supply chain security risks. And yeah, uh, this is probably the moment you realize that uh, at least a couple of you um, have forgot about software supply chain security in their SAP security strategy or practices. Um, so there are some recommendations uh, for closing this and, and for taking this away. Um, so some things that you should consider as by my experience to take care of when selecting a third party solution. Um, so yeah, you need to check third party software and uh, I'm not kidding about that. And uh, the problem is like it comes with many obstacles. Um, 
we already have plenty of things to do. Um, so how can you actually um, put this on your plate? And uh, yeah, it has to be said, it comes actually with, uh, with certain obstacles and um, you, you will uh, require to put resources on it uh, to address that. You can address that, however, on different levels. Uh, starting with um, that you checking the existence and the quality of the solution guidelines, security guidelines that you're receiving from the vendor. Um, so like, is there a secure communication channel with the vendor? Does, for example, maybe have the vendor a bug bounty program uh, for the solution they are providing? Do they have like um, a, a dedicated communication channel? How you can reach out to them as a customer uh, to report on security issues? Do they actually provide uh, some set of guarantee as with the contract in the maintenance contract with you uh, for providing patches in a, in a you know, reasonable, timely manner. Uh, so a good, uh, good reference, for example, is the 90-day practice uh, that have been more, more or less established by the Google Zero project. Um, do they have like a reasonable good description about their uh, software uh, development and lifecycle practices? Um, like, you know, um, do, they, um, do they show due diligence in how they are assessing the quality and security of the software they are providing? Um, you should be able to ask them for the list of the of deployment uh, objects that are part of the software delivery so that you can analyze when you are receiving a software delivery, like does the actual delivery match, uh, match with the list you received from them? And that you also understand like what's the, what's the purpose of the different deployment objects? So that means when there is some strange object over here, uh, a good example is for example, so-called x files, so which are reports which are executed when, uh, when a transport is in, being implemented in that system. Uh, for example, to do some cleanup work or things like that, uh, that there is a clear description for what is this uh, supposed to be used for. So what is this supposed to do? Um, the same is not only for the initial software delivery, but also for the updates and patches you're about to receive. Uh, demand a secure download option uh, that like, ideally it works with digital signatures that you can verify, um, not only for transports, but also for, for multi-target archives. When it's actually um, a saint delivery, um, SAP in the meanwhile has enforced uh, since I think it's uh, three or four years in the meanwhile now that these same uh, deliveries have to provide a digital signature, otherwise the import via same. Um, so the, uh, the, the add-on installation tool uh, um, within an ABAP uh, system uh, will otherwise reject uh, to import the add-on. Ask uh, them for um, you know, providing their software in a separate dedicated namespace. So that you, that you really can make a relation in your system and also for your auditors um, that uh, like which part of the software belongs to which vendor is obvious and clear and it doesn't conflict actually with your customer namespace. Uh, also because of, of uh, uh, having object coalitions there. Also the vendor should be, uh, when they are shipping by transports, uh, they should provide deletion transports and ideally a repair key. Because like if the vendor uh, drops out of the market, uh, is not providing maintenance for your product anymore, or is not able to provide, uh, um, uh, for example, a security fix uh, on a short notice, that you have options actually to mitigate on that. And uh, yeah, um, again, you have to make some kind of testing for the security of the solution that, uh, that you are buying and running. Um, if you can do that by yourself, um, ask an independent third party, um, ideally competent in doing so in helping you with that. Um, because the responsibility in the uh, in, in latest consequence is still on your end. Yeah, so at least that you're not ending up like Obi-Wan when figuring out that Anakin is uh, not such a nice guy as he originally thought of. Yeah, um, again, sorry for the, for the complications we had. Um, we'll have this sorted uh, next time for sure. And the next time will be the 14th of, the, of December. 
where uh, I will be actually discussing with Clemens Kruger, um, uh, one of the one of the authors of uh, of e-learnings in our academy, and also an author uh, uh, for a book about uh, uh, security of the um, SFA of the SAP HANA database. Um, some pro tips uh, how to protect uh, SAP HANA. And uh, yeah, my question to you is for starting the discussion. Do you actually think that we need an independent authority uh, to certify uh, SAP third-party add-ons? Um, yeah, happy to have your opinion on that.